Now, Dr. Paul Craig Roberts was the former Assistant Secretary of State, the former head editor of the Wall Street Journal, uh, and of course the best-selling author on many of the top think tanks in Washington as well. So he's you know a big former insider. And he has talked a lot about the fact that there is insanity by the ruling elite. He was involved in the collapse of the Soviet Union and negotiating that with them. Uh, he's warned that Russia may use nuclear weapons. Well, they came out, Putin, last week and said that we were preparing to use nuclear weapons if you continue to send in armor to attack us. Cracks in Washington's empire, Washington's EU vassals might be finding their backbone. Roberts reported on this on the 18th, a day later, it was in AP, Reuters everywhere, basically the same headline that a whole bunch of countries, Switzerland, Luxembourg, South Korea, Japan, Australia, and others uh, joined uh, and, and also uh, Britain, Germany, France, and, and Italy uh, to get into the Chinese-led Asian Investment Bank. But some of the elite over here are investing as well. So this is a big deal. It's a challenge to the IMF and World Bank to dollar hegemon that the globalists have been using to abuse U.S. power and really destroying it long term in the process and destroying our soft power, to quote Roberts. So, Roberts, I'm going to shut up. You've got the floor for the next 10 minutes or so, and I'll come back in with some other areas I want to get into. But... Um, it does look like some of the first cracks in the bravada, in the chutzpah. Uh, how big a deal are Putin's announcements about nukes? Uh, and how big a deal uh, is the situation? Uh, and, and then how does that tie into Yellen saying we may raise rates a little? What's really going on? <laughs> well, as you know, Alex, a great deal is going on. Um, <clears throat> the Chinese, by bringing out this new Asian uh, investment bank, uh, are in the process of displacing uh, Washington's Asian Development Bank. Washington uses development banks, you know, whether the Asian one or the, or the World Bank or, or other of its financial creatures, such as IMF, uh, to impose its financial and political hegemony on other countries. Uh, China is much more clever and has created this new bank in order to actually help countries and build friendships and to build trust. And no one any longer trusts Washington. They know that it's a bully and that whatever it holds out to you is just a harness to put you in. So the surprising development was the rapidity <clears throat> with which American puppet states like Great Britain, I mean, Great Britain is a total American puppet state. They never make a decision without asking Washington what they should decide. And yet Britain accepted this despite Washington's warning and opposition. So did France, Germany, and Italy. And then Australia and, and uh, South Korea, which initially had turned down the Chinese invitation to join uh, as a result of Washington's pressure on them, are now reconsidering. What's, what's precipitating this? I, I think um, what's precipitating it is Washington is now so reckless. It's so full of arrogance and hubris. And really, it's a, it's a megalomaniac. And the world's beginning to realize that they're under threat of destruction by the incessant lies coming out of Washington about war, particularly with regard to Russia and to China. These incessant lies. Um, about Russian invasions of Ukraine, about a pending Russian invasion of the Baltics and Poland. And they, and they realize that Washington is so uh, out of control in its own mind that its power is slipping, that it's going to drive the whole world into a war in order to try to prevent the rise of Russia and China. And so they're, they're showing... Um, um, a move away from this control. They're trying to show that the empire's alliances are shaky and that Washington needs to pull in its horns and back off. I think that's really what's going on. In addition, the financial interest in those countries have to be disturbed by the massive creation of money and debt in the United States. You know, the money and debt in the last six or seven years has grown many multiples times greater than the gross domestic product that has to support that money and debt. And so the whole notion of Washington as some sort of a 
financial safe house is is diminishing. When you look at Ch China, is is really the only country in the world that has massive independent reserves. It's uh, the soundest financial system there is. And so I think they're saying, hey, look, we better remember that uh, we can go down with the Americans if we don't make some sort of hedge against our American bet. And those hedges can expand quickly. Putin's now called for a Eurasian currency union as well. So this saber rattling is forcing people out of very compliant stance they were in just six years ago uh, into a uh, obstinate stance. You summed it up very well, Alex. It's exactly what's happening. What's wrong with Washington? Because it's now national news. Roger Port picked it up. Official Army document. It's public. Says they list uh, conservative areas, libertarian areas of California, Texas, and Utah as areas they think might have an uprising. And they're having a joint forces command training to take on domestic groups. Uh, and they list Texas as an enemy uh, hostile. I mean, this is reaching twilight zone proportions. Who in the world would train the Pentagon and then publicly put out? I mean, we know the Pentagon had plans to invade Canada, but that doesn't mean they're going to do it. But they're actually training in huge military operations coming up this summer to basically invade Texas. It, you mean in the in the event of instability? Yes. Kind of collapse and, and some sort of, yeah. Well, we'll find out how tough Texans are. <laughs> you know, Texas is a big place, uh, uh, kind of like Afghanistan. And uh, if after 14 years, uh, Washington couldn't defeat a few thousand lightly armed Taliban, it's not likely to defeat the Texans. <laughs> but we'll see what happens. Um, it, it, clearly, as you say, uh, Washington is uh, insane. They're unstable. They're mentally unstable. They're not just psychopaths. Well, clearly they're insane drawing up war plans on Texas. <laughs> and Utah. Do yeah. you have to, look, what, what does, uh, for example, what does Utah Senator Orrin Hatch think about this? There's war, never anything out of any of them. War plans against his home state. What do the Texas senators think? What does George W. Bush think? <clears throat> there he is sitting in Texas, <clears throat> and <clears throat> Washington <clears throat> is drawing up plans to invade Texas. Uh, will he be a victim too? Well, remember three years ago when the legislature passed in the House unanimously that they would indict people for groping at the TSA, and then they, before it passed the Senate, it was in the AP, they said, we'll put F-16s in and an embargo aircraft. The immediate response was the same thing that started the Civil War, a blockade. That shows the hubris. You, you used to be in Washington at the highest levels. How has it changed since you were at the highest levels? It's a different country, Alex. It's a different country. It's nothing like what uh, it was like when I was there. I mean, not that it was any kind of idealistic place. There was a lot of corruption and cowardice and scheming and illegality and immorality. But compared to what it is now, it was like heaven. <clears throat> There's no... What was Ronald Reagan like, who you knew, um, I guess pretty good from what I've read, and you, he credited you for Reaganomics. What was he like versus what we have now? Well, he never would have done any of this stuff. He respected uh, the Oval Office. He respected the Constitution. Uh, the kind of bad things he got roped into doing was part of forcing uh, the Soviets to negotiate the end of the Cold War. For example, Grenada, uh, Nicaragua. Uh, the neocons in the government, before he fired them, told him that uh, you can't let there be a left-wing takeover in the Caribbean or, or in uh, Central America because it will encourage the Soviets. And you'll never get them to negotiate the end of the Cold War. Well, that was his main goal, to end the Cold War and to cure the stagflation. And he said you had to first fix the economy so he would have the resources with which to threaten the Russians and drive them to negotiate. And so the kinds of bad things he got looped into doing, roped into doing, was uh, the neocons using his main goal to achieve some of their ends. As the head of policy at the Treasury, number two guy there, sitting down with Reagan, how were you able, over all of their objections, able to get him to take on your economic plan that did create one of the biggest booms we've seen in the last century? 
Well, actually, he took it on before he got into office. It was part of his campaign. And when he got there, he realized he was going to have a hard time getting it out of his government. And so he appointed me to get his program out of his own government so it could be voted on Congress. So I didn't have to sell him on anything. He was already sold on it, and he put me in charge of it because he knew I was committed to it. What would Ronald Reagan think today if he was seeing all this? Oh, he would think that we had been taken over by the Nazis or something. He would be astonished. He wouldn't be able to understand it. He was, what, this is not my country. You know, look, what the United States has been doing the entirety of the 21st century is murdering people. I mean, the United States has become murder incorporated. It murders people. All it does is murder people. It, it's seven or eight countries have been repeatedly invaded, bombed, droned. Uh, some of them are in total ruins. We're talking about millions of people either dead, maimed, or displaced. And it's ongoing now. They're starting on Russia. See, so Ukraine is being sacrificed. I mean, it's a basket case. And it's all to uh, stop the rise of Russia. We, you, we were going to get into this anyhow, but we're... Yeah, let's talk point. about Putin's statements. <clears throat> well, uh, initially, Putin thought that uh, Russia was now part of the West. We're, we're part of you. We're, get, we're going to get along with you. He got into the World Trade Organization. He was... Uh, the G7 was expanded to the G8. He... Everything was fine until the United States went in, organized a coup in Kiev, threw out the elected government, put in a puppet government, essentially a Nazi government, that hates Russians, and they started killing Russians, destroying Russian war monuments, threatening the Russian populations in eastern and southern Ukraine. And Putin realized that the Americans would use Ukraine to grab the Soviet naval base in Crimea, the only war war port. And so he said, holy smoke, they're after us. And, and so he has been gradually catching on that this wasn't some kind of mistake that got away from the Americans, that this was an intention, and that the United States intends to turn Russia into a vassal state, just like everybody else. And he realizes that that's not going to happen. And so he keeps issuing warnings. They get stronger, and they get stronger, and they get stronger. And he's relying, I think perhaps mistakenly, but maybe not, he's relying on the main European powers, such as Germany and France, uh, to realize that their populations, their life, their existence, is being threatened by Washington by pushing them into a conflict situation with Russia. And so he's relying on the French and the Germans to simply leave NATO or put their foot down or, or start blocking the American aggression against Russia. It's very difficult for Washington to carry this on without the complicity of sure. Europe. Well, the Germans lost 21 million people in World War II. That was just 65, 70 years ago. The Russians lost that same amount. You'd think it'd be fresh in their minds not to have a war with Russia. Well, I think it is. I think that's not what... The I mean, a few of their crazy generals, but other than that, the population is totally against this, you know, and, and many of the members of the German parliament, the former chancellors and, and, and political leaders have all come out telling Merkel, you really got to stop being Washington's puppet. We can't uh, take these kinds of risks. It's not in the interest of Germany or Europe. You think they're blackmailing Merkel? Oh, sure. Of course they are. But... There's no, you know, would you let somebody blackmail you if the consequence was going to be the destruction of life on Earth? No. But no. And I, don't, <clears throat> I, I think that she's just slow on the uptake. She's not, um, it, you know, she's, it's not like she's some kind of genius. And so many people are inculcated into the American myth that we're the white hats and the salt of the earth and the exceptional and the indispensable and the good guys and blah, blah, blah. It takes them a while to see the reality. And we did, we did see that Merkel and Halan went to Russia to negotiate with Putin an end of the Ukraine crisis. And they did that over Washington's objection. And you see every day that Washington is doing everything it possibly can 
to uh, upset the agreement <clears throat> that Merkel and Halal... But you're saying overall things are going in a little bit better direction now. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, we come back from breaking the final segment. Then I want to ask you about the latest uh, policy announcements out of the Federal Reserve uh, on interest rates and just you know, your brief take on the current climate in the economy. Dr. Paul Craig Roberts, paulcraigroberts.org. This is an amazing website. Stay with us. Hunters. You're listening to The Alex Jones Show. The Genesis Communications Radio Network proudly presents The Alex Jones Show, because there's a war on for your mind. Dr. Paul Greg Roberts, former head of policy at the Treasury Department, uh, is an expert economist and can uh, tell us what he sees going on with the Fed. Some countries are going below zero in interest rates. They're talking about going up a little bit. Uh, we see a lot of mainstream news admitting the economic outlook is grim. So, Dr. Roberts, uh, give us your prognosis on that. Okay. They talk about uh, maybe pushing interest rates up in order to make people a little more comfortable holding dollars. Because the whole world understands that you can't have massive creation of money and debt and negative interest rates. And so... When they talk about raising interest rates, it's just talk to try to block flight from the dollar. That's all it is, because if they raise the interest rates, the stock market's going to collapse, the bond market's going to collapse. And they've got chaos. <clears throat> when you've spent trillions of dollars to save four banks since, 19, since 2008, these are the banks that deregulation allowed to get too large and that and these are banks that gamble. They don't make normal loans. They gamble in a casino, and they don't cover their bets. The taxpayers cover the bets, and the Federal Reserve covers the bets by printing money and buying the bad bets. And that's what American economic policy is. That's what the Fed is locked into. It really has no way to get out of it. It can't get out of it. And it's stuck with it. And because it wouldn't let the banks fail because the banks control the Fed. Look, who, who, is, uh, who have the secretaries of the Treasury been? It's the former banksters who caused the financial crisis. Every one of them have rotated through the Treasury. So they're protecting their own mistakes. Look at the Fed. What is the Fed? It's the same people. Look at the New York Fed. Who are, who are the directors of the New York Fed? It's the same banks. Everybody at the Justice Department at the top uh, is part of those uh, lobbying groups and consulting groups that uh, write the regulations and the policies and follow the papers to let the big banks get away with the derivatives. I mean, it's just a revolving door. It's, it's, it's one small group, and they control the economic policy. So how are they going to take a decision? It blows up everything they've been trying to do. So they'll keep this going as long as they can. They have everything rigged. It's a house of cards, but it's standing. And it will continue to stand as long as foreign countries sure. are willing to hold the dollar. What does it signify that even the Guardian reports that a lot of these big banker heads, billionaires, are building secret airstrips and redoubts in New Zealand and in the Ozarks and, 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 and that they're scared getting bodyguards? <laughs> I don't know. I mean... I don't know what it means, but what we do know is the country does not have an economic policy that serves the country or serves business or serves economic growth. You see, they tell you that the Fed's policy is designed to encourage the economy, but we don't see a recovery. Sure. There's no recovery. They make one up, but it's not because they don't count the unemployed people. <laughs> it's amazing. It's just insanity. And the minute we have left... Um, I don't know how these four or five mega banks think they're going to survive a nuclear war with Russia, but maybe they're so arrogant they think that they're immune from that. The, the neoconservatives think that the United States can win the nuclear war because our stuff is better than the Russians. And we have ABMs, anti-ballistic missiles, and so when the Russians try to uh, retaliate to our first strike, they'll shoot their missiles down. So this is the myth. Um, I'm reading a book now by, I think, Andrew Coleman. It's called, um, um, what is it called? It doesn't matter. But... Anyhow, he, he shows that the United States has endless faith in technology as a way of, of, of conducting 
war and it always fails it has never worked ever it didn't work well, didn't i mean work. we know the russians are gonna have subs pop up with cruise missiles and 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 blow up every i mean it's gonna be an absolute disaster yeah, but sure we'll def destroy them worse but there's so many nukes it'll destroy the whole planet it's insane it's insane but everybody in washington is insane you know i have i have no confidence alex if there's anybody in the government that has an ounce of integrity or an ounce of morality. It's scary. We're going to have to talk to you more about this in the future. Dr. Paul Craig Roberts, thank you so much. Have a great weekend, sir. Kiss your grandchildren. <laughs> is the average person's life is filled with unexpected challenges unlock the energy it takes to defend